Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our second session of day three of our third annual William Mary Professionals Week. I am Michael Steelman, Director of Alumni Career Management and Professional Networks for William Mary, and it is my pleasure to work with each of you throughout this week to provide valuable career resources and professional events to enhance and strengthen our William Mary Professional Networks. Throughout this week, we have touched on the emerging theme and the import on the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion in supporting individuals and organizations to thrive. Today, we, have, we are taking a deeper dive into DE&I and shared best practices earlier this hour, uh, earlier this afternoon, and how now to create and cultivate a more inclusive workplace. Thank you so much for joining us. It is now my great pleasure to invite my colleague, Valerie Wilkins, to kick off this afternoon's uh, event and introduce our guest speaker. Val is our Associate Director of Alumni Admission and Inclusion Initiatives at William Mary. She is a 2008 graduate of the School of Education, earning her Master's in Educational Policy Planning and Leadership. And over the past five years, she has built resources and programs to not only support legacy families in the admission process, but also to enhance diversity, equity, and inclusion across the programming and vision of our William Mary Alumni Association. Val has the joy of working directly with the Hulam Willis Association, William Mary's Black Alumni Network. If you have not had the pleasure of getting to know Val, I highly recommend reaching out and getting more engaged with her initiatives. Now, without further ado, I'd ask Val to take it away. Thank you so much, Michael, and welcome everyone. Um, today is my pleasure to introduce my very, very good friend, Samisha Williams. Um, but before we get started, uh, we have a couple housekeeping items and um, we're gonna go through those really quickly. So it looks like everyone is already on board with the with a few of these. So I just wanna make sure that everyone's mic is muted. Um, that's gonna ensure that we have the best quality possible for our recording and for your viewing pleasure. Um, and it's best to have it in speaker view. So there will be a, a slide presentation and a slide deck that you will be able to view. Um, but if you have it in speaker view, you'll also be able to see Tamisha as well. If you have questions as we go along, and I believe Tamisha will remind you of this, um, you can submit those questions via the chat function, and that's at the bottom of your screen. And as I said before, this event will be recorded, and we're making sure that it will be available um, for those who are not able to join us or for those who are on the call and would like to revisit the topics that we are talking about today. Um, so there's so much I could say <laughs> about Tamisha. Um, and she laughs because we've known each other for a very long time, but I'm gonna keep it brief so we can get to the meat of the session. Tamisha is a fellow member of what I have coined the tribe of spiders. Um, having earned her bachelor's degree from the University of Richmond in 2006 and a master's of education in counseling from William Mary in 2010. Tamisha is an experienced facilitator and program developer who specializes in creating affirming and healing spaces for women, BIPOC and LGBTQ communities. We are excited to have you with us, Tamisha, and I'm going to turn the floor to you. Thank you so much, Valerie, for that introduction. And hi, everybody. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Um, just uh, to get us grounded and connected in this space, I want to first um, just give you all an opportunity to share where you're zooming in from. That's helpful for me as a facilitator to just know a little bit about the folks in the room since I won't be able to see everyone's faces and talk to everyone um, as if we were in person. So I do invite you right now just to add to the chat where are you zooming in from and let's um, share that with one another. And while those are coming in, I will also just share a little bit about what you can expect for our time together. Um, also, hi, I see fellow people who are from Virginia. So I'm actually from Richmond, Virginia, currently living in Herndon, Virginia. Um, and then I see some folks from California. I just recently moved. Oh my gosh, I think I might've muted myself. So I'm back. <laughs> Um, I just recently moved from San Francisco, California, and am now living in Herndon, Virginia, working at a school and um, look forward to returning to Richmond actually this summer. People from Florida, we've got folks from Oklahoma City, DC, Maryland, New Jersey, thank you all for being in this space. I'm excited to talk with you today. Additionally, um, during our time together, Something that some things that you can expect first is that I, I do talk fast, but I'm also going to try to make sure that this workshop goes at a pace 
that speaks to us uh, taking a pause, taking a breath and taking stock of who we are and what our needs are um, as we do the work around social justice. Um, I'm also going to ensure that there's time for us to connect with one another. So there are going to there's going to be one opportunity where you will get to talk in small groups for a good amount of time. Um, so just be prepared and know that that is coming. There's also going to be an opportunity for you to just reflect, to pause, to think for yourself. Um, and, and there'll be an actual pause in the presentation for you to do that. And so when it comes to the pace of this workshop, the pace of it is intentional. I could talk for an hour and then fill this with content, but it's more important for me that we all have an opportunity to really think about the content of what I'm sharing today um, and not just me sharing what's on my own mind. Um, I'd also like us to do a quick check-in um, because I do acknowledge that if you see these pictures on the screen, um, there's a lot that's happening in our spaces. Um, we still are dealing with the impact of and the continue um, the continuous presence of COVID-19, um, this global pandemic that has just rocked um, our communities um, personally and also uh, just around the entire world. Um, so I just want to name that. And then also you see the picture of the two hands that are, you know, pulling against each other and recognizing that there are a number of tensions that we are also navigating in addition to a global pandemic. Tensions that have been present um, prior, right, to this pandemic, but that absolutely add continue layers of um, disparities in our communities. And those being our, our systems of oppression that we are grappling with. And because of that, I know that people aren't just coming into this space, um, everyone in the same way. Um, some people may have been dealing with personal issues prior, may still have them going on and, and messages coming through your phone and others may have a really relaxing day ahead. But it's helpful for me as a facilitator and also for you as participants to let's just know the flavor of the room. So I'm also gonna invite you all to drop into the chat now, like how are you coming into this space? On a scale from one to 10, one being like, you know, Tanisha, I'm really low energy today. And if I did close my eyes for a meditation, I'd be asleep. Um, 10 being, Tanisha, I'm so excited to be here. I'm ready, <laughs> um, full of energy. Where are you, how are you coming into this space today? Let's put that in the chat. And instead of just putting your own and stepping away from the chat, also see how other folks are coming into the space. And welcome to those who are just joining. Um, I just also wanna say shout out to Melody Porter. She is my first supervisor ever with my graduate program at William & Mary. And people have had a the big shoes to fill, <laughs> like literally and figuratively um, in terms of supporting me. Thank you. you. You never know the impact that you have had on my life. So good to see you. All right, so I'm seeing some eights, some sixes, some sevens. Um, people are, People are doing, yeah, good. We're on the we're on the scale of things. A four and an eight at the same time. Elizabeth, I see you and I hear you. Um, it is possible. It is possible to be both. Great. Thank you all for sharing how you're coming into this space today. Um, and again, just take a moment to see where others are on that scale of one to ten. And um, yeah hold space for everybody, especially because we'll have some moments to chat later. And I want to make sure that um people feel seen and heard. So the last thing I'm gonna ask you to do is considering how you're coming into this space, whether it be a, a, a two, a four or a 10, um, I'd like us all just to take a, a few moments to set an attention to be present for now. Um, whatever it is that may be pulling at our attention um, or some of the emotions that we're having, whatever that may be related to, I would like to gift you the next 50 minutes for you to be present with yourself in this space. And so I'm just gonna give us, you know, let's take 20 seconds to just pause and just set an intention for yourself to be present in this space and even just name for yourself if you need to, what do I need to let go of or release for the next 50 minutes in order to be present for myself? Okay, now we're gonna roll on in to why we're here. Okay, 
Um, so this quote, the first time that I read it, um, it spoke to me and continues to speak to me. Caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. And I just wanna sit on that piece of self-preservation. Because when I think, um, when we talk about self-care, um, we often are, are talking about, or, or people speak from it from a place of indulgence and things that we can do and give to ourselves. And what I've really found over the past, I would say five to seven years personally, is that it really is about self-preservation. Um, there is a need for us to be present for ourselves, especially those of us who are on a continuous basis through our job, giving to others, caring for others, holding space for others, um, and even more so, if we hold multiple marginalized identities within ourselves, and if the work that we're doing also intersects with, um, again, marginalization in any way. So it's so present for us to be present for ourselves, our health and our wellness. We talked earlier about navigating a world where there are just multiple right now, um, challenges that face us and they've always been present but more than ever right these challenges are compounding on one another what i've found is that things have been just unpredictable um week to week even i, I work at a school and each week we're having to plan differently and sometimes the students say can we just get a two-week preview and we honestly can't because then we've got winter weather coming right it's unpredictable and at the same time while i saw people say when this pandemic first started like we can change our, we need to change our pace. We need to be responsive. I've noticed that like, that's been hard to do, um, especially working in environments that are trying to keep up and serve our constituents. And if we are the folks that have to make that serving happen, our pace in an unpredictable world right now is also hard to keep up with. In order for us to do our best, and to serve, but even setting that aside in order just for us to continue to live and thrive, we have to be present for ourselves. As much as we are present for those that we're serving, or as much as we are present for the work that we're doing, the output that we're doing. And so what I wanna to share today is that tending to our personal health and wellness is just as much a part of a requirement of the jobs that we do than the job description that you are working for. And I feel like it's overused, the analogy of like, put your mask on first, but it's also very real. When you get into an airplane and they tell you, you know, if you're a caregiver, put your mask on first before putting on someone else's, that's the reality that if you go to help somebody else and don't put your mask on, you actually might not even be able to help them because you might not get the air that you need. And at the same time, like you, you need your air, right? Um, and it's overused, but I also don't think that we over internalize it. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just create space for us to think about what our needs are as we are doing work that really requires our all and requires of us to constantly give. How are some of the ways that we can actually push back against the system that is asking us to work beyond our ability to tend to ourselves? And as we go into this exercise that we're going to do, one thing that I'll note is that if we don't tend to ourselves, one of the risks that we, um, that we take is that we, we replicate harmful systems that we're trying to dismantle. Because when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, when I'm lonely, when I'm fearful, my actions often don't allow, uh, align with the clear values I have when I'm clear-headed, clear-minded, fed in community. But if we are constantly at a place of depletion and neglecting ourselves, even the best of intentions that we have to speed up the process of things and to I'll hurry up and decide this without bringing community in for this conversation, we're gonna be replicating some of the harmful systems that we're actually fighting against. So today I'm asking us to interrupt those systems, to, to do some work for ourselves and really thinking about our ability to do community focused work by first working on ourselves. So in this next exercise that we're gonna do, I'm gonna be asking you to get curious about your needs, get really specific about your needs and get clear about the consequence if those needs don't get met. I should have said in the beginning, but if you have something around you where you can draw or, or write on, um, we're gonna be doing an exercise that is gonna be asking you to reflect. 
absolutely without that, you'll be fine. But for those of you who have something to write with, I invite you during this time to um, pull that out. It can be anything, a napkin, a paper, a notebook, a journal. I'm gonna first ask you to do a one minute quick draw of this image. And I want you to draw this image such that then you could also maybe draw some arrows outside of it to write in um, your reflections. And again, for those of you who are, are saying like, I don't have any of that around me, no worries. Um, there are gonna be reflection questions and time for you to reflect and you can just think about those. You don't have to write them down. So here's the one minute. I'm gonna put my timer on and I'm gonna give you one minute to quick draw what I have on the screen. Let me do a, 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 just a note to say this. Your image does not have to look like mine. If you're someone who's like, I cannot draw, this is stressful. Um, look at the shapes. My birds, you know, they're really, they're M's if you look at them. Um, my iceberg is a triangle on top and a triangle on bottom. My boat, it's a rectangle at the bottom, a line, a triangle, and a, you can do a rectangle flag. And now I'm gonna put my timer on and allow you all to draw and I'm gonna be quiet. Take about 30 more seconds to do your drawing. Again, quick draw. Not going for something that's going in a museum, although it could. Okay, that was your minute. Obviously, if you have some finishing touches you want to put on your drawing, you still can. We're going to use this image of an iceberg and the ocean with a boat coming towards it. You know, I don't know boating, so perhaps my sail is saying that it's going away, but we're just going to imagine it's going towards the iceberg and our birds. We're going to use this as an analogy for us thinking about what it is we need to tend to for ourselves and doing the work that we're doing for others. So I'm going to actually give you some time to reflect. We're going to actually take about 10 minutes. And what I'd like you to do is to answer these questions. What do people see on the outside? What are some of the actions, the feelings, the presence that I give on the outside every day doing my work? What are some of the things, though, that I'm very sure to cover up? What's beneath the surface? What are some of the needs that I'm not expressing related to my work or related to my being, related to me being able to do my work with integrity, sustainability, being a whole person? And our boat are the things that you really care about. So what's at stake if we don't vocalize our needs? What's at stake if those needs don't get met? And as a quick modeling, what I might say is every day when I show up at work, either virtually or in person, what people see is energetic. They see smile, they see somebody walking really fast. Um, they see someone who is, is full of energy and, and making a lot of lists, fully present. What's beneath the surface is feeling exhausted knowing that when I come home, sometimes I don't even have time to actually enjoy being present with my wife and my dog, with myself. Some of the needs that I was hesitant to express early on in my job is, um, this role is not sustainable. <laughs> Are there some things that I can actually put a pause in because I can't get to this all? Who might be able to help me carry some of this? Are we going to have a conversation about how this role can be more sustainable? And what's at stake if I didn't vocalize those needs? Um, one was me actually not doing a good job, people eventually seeing on the outside someone who was not put together, someone who was missing appointments 
and, and not uh, completing the tasks that they had seen. But also what was at stake is, is my students not being served, the community, um, the folks that I, I wanted to serve not also getting what they needed. So that's just an example. But you're gonna have 10 minutes to do that reflection. Um, so you don't have to go as quick as I do. So I'm gonna put myself on mute and put my timer on. And I'm gonna ask that you take this space for yourself. Remember that intention that you set for yourself and do this reflection. And I'll try to do some music in the background. Take about five more minutes to do your reflection and then we'll come back together. Take about five more minutes.
Take about two more minutes to finish up your reflection and then we're going to be coming on back together. Two more minutes. You've got about one more minute remaining. And so I'm going to ask you all to start to wrap up your reflection. And as you wrap up your reflection, um, also be thinking about what it is that you feel comfortable sharing with others, knowing that you do not have to share everything. You should not, because there won't be enough time. <laughs> but I do want you all to have a, a moment to connect with one another. So take about 30 more seconds to wrap up your reflections and then we will come back together. All right, so um, I want to actually, and I think this might be a good time for me to, well, I'll go to the next slide, but then I'll stop sharing for a little bit. What I would love for you all to do is to have time to check in with one another about what came up for you. What came up for you in that reflection? What did you notice about yourself? Um, were, was there anything that was surprising in that reflection that came up for you? Is this the first time that you have actually um, provided yourself space to ask those questions? So you're going to be in a groups of about four or five, um, and I want to say thank you to Tim for helping me to navigate these groups. Um, and I'm going to give you all, look at my time, say about 12 minutes in your groups to just share what's come up for you. And again, what we want to notice is that there's going to be four to five people in only 12 minutes. Um, so how can we make sure that we are making space for others to share? And also taking up some space if we're someone who usually waits for everyone to share and, and then sometimes we don't get an opportunity to. So just be mindful of that airtime. 
And then going back to setting an intention to be present, how can you be present for those folks who are also sharing? So I'm gonna stop sharing just so that um, can be in a space. And I am going to, Tim, are, you the, are we good to go in and open up some of the rooms for people? We are all good, so I'll open up the rooms right now. Okay, great, thank you. And if you're having trouble connecting to a room, do let us know. You can either drop it into the chat or unmute and we'll make sure that you get there. All right, looks like almost everyone here has gone through. Okay. Do you want me to pause the recording? Oh yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, let's pause it. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. I think the groups have about 10 or 15 more seconds to come on back together. So we'll wait for everybody to come into the room. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I think we're still waiting on maybe one more group down to the last second. Great. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're almost at the end. So I, I want to pause and just see if maybe take a two or three minutes. Is there anyone who wants to either in the chat or just even unmuting share with the full group, uh, maybe a highlight or an aha moment or something that came up for you even in conversation with others? I'll be happy oh. to go first. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so I, I think what came up for us is the fact that many people are going through the same process of casting about for solutions, whether mm. it's job hunting in one case or losing weight, keeping on an exercise schedule. You know, we're looking at various opportunities to improve. And it doesn't come naturally necessarily. So we're looking for solutions and it's difficult to find them. There are too many options out there, in fact. So how do we pare those down? Where do we get support to maintain a very um, serene lifestyle? Ooh, serene. Yeah, and Melody, I saw that you unmuted. Yeah. I. I appreciate what Alexandra just shared and what Steve put in the chat too. the what's at stake, man, that that got real sad real fast for me. <laughs> but honestly, what um, what came the feeling that I have coming out of the conversation that our little group had was just like a sense of companionship in the questions and in the struggle and in the oh, my gosh, get me out of here <laughs> type feeling. Um, so I'm I'm really grateful just to have that little exhale in these moments. Yeah. But yeah, man, that what's at stake to Misha. Why did you do that to us? <laughs> <laughs> you can thank yourself, Melody. For <laughs> I remember during our check-ins on a bi-weekly basis and I would play with the toys in your basket and I would talk professionally and I would talk about what I was doing with my, you know, with my graduate assistantship. And every time you would say, and then personally, and, and what are you doing for yourself? And and I would sometimes just be a deer to headlights. I'm like, can I just play with these toys in your basket, Melody? <laughs> and I think that it's it's taken me right so many years to recognize like uh, there are a lot of things at stake. Um, and I've you know, yeah, and and so many levels. Not even the job ones, right? I gave examples of jobs, but also like relationships and um, family, friends, all of that. So yeah, it it is. It's that boat, you know. It's a real one. 
Anybody else before we do a little wrapping up? Okay. So Alexandra, I want to, you know, the what's the support, right? Like how do I <laughs> make sense of all of these things out here to get to the serene lifestyle? Um, the birds in your image, that the the birds piece, to me, the birds are how can I create some moments of intentional pause for myself? And how do I intentionally cultivate some joy for myself? And, and those are the things that I realize that like, there aren't always answers, immediate answers, but sometimes it's just the a one thing today. It's a one thing tomorrow. It is a listening to my body today. And maybe I said I was going to do this thing for the next 30 days, <laughs> but instead what I'm going to do for the next 30 days is actually just ask myself what I need today. And so, um, and, and, and those birds could also be for you, like the intentional moment of pause to just think about what I need and then asking for support. Um, and so I, I appreciate you putting that into this space. And I actually would love to give everyone just a minute and a half, right? Of me not talking and of you all filling in for yourself those birds, or just if you didn't draw, what just thinking about how can I create intentional moments of pause for myself? What are some of the intentional things I can do to cultivate joy? And just list maybe two, two things or three things, right? You shouldn't have 10 birds on your, on your page. <laughs> Let's not overwhelm ourselves in this. I'm gonna put my timer on. I'm also gonna share screen again. Okay, that did something funky. There we go. All right, take about 30 more seconds just to fill in those birds. What's, how can I create a moment of intentional pause for myself? How can I create or cultivate joy for myself? One to three things. And again, I think that what I've come to over this um, past year, right, because we're, we're almost hitting a year in being um, in our shelter in place and, and navigating the realities of COVID, um, what I have come up, for, what's come up for me personally is that the, the thing that I will do each day is really say, like, what do I need today? Um, and sometimes that has meant a nap. Sometimes that has meant doing my headspace at meditation. Other times that's meant I'm going to take this walk, this meeting walking, because I just need to get some air. Um, and then just acknowledging for myself that that's going to shift every week <laughs> as things become unpredictable um, and being okay with that as somebody who was much more kind of regimented and I have to have a plan for the rest of the year. <laughs> Um, that's, that's what I'm finding for myself because then in those moments, I can also ask like, what I want to do for joy for myself. Um, so I, I appreciate, thank you, Abby, for saying what the birds represented for you, um, freedom for you to find the things that mean the most in life and pursue your dreams. Yes. Um, so what I'd like to do is to actually, um, just acknowledge that one, just say, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you all being here and for your time. And, um, I also hope that there is an opportunity, um, if there is an opportunity for us to stay connected, then we can. So I wanted to just let you know, here are the ways that you can stay connected with me. Um, I enjoy chatting on Twitter and sharing thoughts there. Um, and also some of my points of view on Instagram, 
Um, and if you have to email me, you know, if you want to get in touch with me, that's my email address. <laughs> the wink is because I'm like, ah, you're, right now you're going to get a, um, an automatic message that says, if this is an emergency, just go on and text me. But that's also the way I'm taking care of myself these days. Um, that message has probably been up for a year now. Um, so just acknowledging what my needs are. And it is to manage people's expectations who are coming into my inbox these days. <laughs> so. Um, I, I want to also, we have about eight minutes left. I know that I need to hand it back over to Valerie to do a little bit of um, housekeeping and announcements, but in the last four minutes or so, is there anyone who has a question or, or something that they also want to put into the space? Tanisha, I just want to say how superb your training skills and leading our group our leadership leadership skills are you are made for this discipline and it is so wonderful i have been a trainer in a previous life part-time i really enjoy uh the way you have constructed the exercises so kudos to you very well done thank you thank you so much i so appreciate that And stop sharing so we can also see each other as we close out. And thank you all for the for the thanks and appreciation that are coming through the chat. I I do enjoy what I do, um, and I'm excited to do what I do. And I I as I step into my what's next. Um, actually, this summer I'm going to be moving into doing my consulting um, more full time and. Part of that is to create spaces, especially for educators and for folks who are doing service work, right? Like who are pouring into everybody and ensuring that they have an opportunity to also be thinking about their own, their health and their wellness moving forward. Um, so thank you for that affirmation. <laughs> Very timely. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna hand this back over to Valerie to do some closing announcements and just wanna thank you all again for your time today. And I also thank you for taking the time for yourself. For the folks that you serve, they're gonna be better for you all taking care of yourself and setting that intention you did today. So thank you. As amazing Tamisha is with her training, I'm probably not as great with unmuting and turning on video with Zoom, um, <laughs> but um, I know Michael is gonna do the majority of the, the wrap up for today and the thank yous and all that good stuff. But Tamisha, thank you so much. Um, I was over here just like proud mama moment. I was just like, because <sighs> you're doing amazing things and I'm so proud of you and I'm happy to call you my friend. Um, so thank you so much. And also thank you for pushing us to, um, as Steve said, those, those, uh, <laughs> those ideas of what's at stake, it was hard. It was hard um, to really reflect on those. So thank you for giving us the opportunity and also reminding us that we have permission to have these moments to really reflect and think about um, where we are taking care of ourselves um, and in a way that we can still move on and help others. So thank you. I just wanted to say my own personal thank yous. And Michael, you have the floor. Well, both of you, thank you. I mean, Val, you introduced me to Tamisha. Tamisha, outstanding. I echo everyone's sentiment in that you're you're in the zone. You are in the strength of your skills. Um, keep doing it. We need you. We we rely on you. And I am confident we will do more programs together because I enjoyed this hour. Um, and I can tell you that the the days have been a little crazy. Cassie and others and Tim know that my my days here, you touched on many things for me personally. Those of you on, on this call that know me know, you know, I've got two little kids and a lot of things going on in this house that are a little crazy at times. We talked about dogs earlier, Tamisha. That's one item, that, one, one individual in the house, but there's many more making noises and things, but, um, and, and the distractions, but, and we put on this great I'm a theater person. I studied opera. So it's like my, my performances to you all, but there's a lot inside that we all carry. And, um, you know, it's not to say that I don't have passion and love for what I do. And I, that's genuine expression coming out, but I think you're absolutely spot on that, that, that glacier underneath, um, is very, very big and, and, and oftentimes scary when we look at it in that lens. So, 
to, to Steve's points and others it is it is a scary but important item and to have a community like you all to share I enjoyed that breakout um, I hope others enjoyed it I think it's so important to have a small groups piece so you added so much to this week so thank you to Misha thank you Val for making this happen thank you all for joining us um, I will do we'll capture some of this on recording obviously you can't have this uh, full experience but certainly I encourage you to share it with your friends and maybe you can have a conversation like your breakout with your friends and help them and, and others uh, as best as we can. You can't be Tamisha, but we can at least do our part to uh, share her great um, effort, her, her great work here. Just a few last thoughts. Um, we have one more amazing session today. If you have time and are available at 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, we have Janet Atwater, Karen, Wolf, Professor Karen Wolf, and John Elder Robinson, one of the leading scholars of autism and neurodiversity around the world. Um, and he happens to be a fellow, a visiting residence fellow at William Mary. And uh, to have him, uh, who actually has been instrumental in advising the SAP company globally on their autism at work efforts, who we had their head of global diversity start off today, is just a, an example of the power of this great William Mary network. Um, so that's at four today. Tomorrow, if you are trying to figure out your career passion and, and kind of ask some important questions similar to some of the things that we touched on today, but a little bit different more on the on career mindset. I recommend tomorrow's session uh, with Pam Krulitz and Raylene Wagner and um, Bob Merkel. We will, we will have um, a really great conversation there. And then Friday we'll, we'll celebrate all of this week and, and try to have some fun with a new networking technology called Gatherly. Uh, Cassie's been really working hard with our events team to pull this together. It's got really neat features. It's a video. It's if you like this conversation of chatting with people, you can have small groups and one-on-ones and big group discussions. We'll have it by industry. It's pretty cool. So I highly recommend registering for Friday at noon. Uh, bring some lunch if you need to. Obviously, you're on camera. Or you can take it off camera if you need to, but um, have some fun with it. And and last but not least, I know there's been some sharing of gr gratitude already through this session, but don't forget if you have somebody in the William Mary community that has um, been supportive to you in your career and your profession, this is a week to say shout out, you know, do the hashtag WM Professionals Week and put it out there on social media channel that you use most comfortably and to your choice. And we'll, we'll be following all the channels and uh, we'll, we'll try to share it and uh, to a wider community and, and give support to the great community that you're a part of. So thank you all. And any last words, Tamisha? Uh, no, but just there is a comment in the chat about the link for the 4 p.m. event, if you wanted to share that. Oh, please, yes. Um, if you go to wmalumni.com, uh, you'll see the neurodiversity event on the upcoming events listing. And then um, also, I think Tim is going to put a survey. Oh, he already even put the event in there. And then if you want, um, we have a little survey. It's, it takes less than a minute. But if you want to take, take care of it now, then it saves us the time of having to do it another time. But uh, for this event, that would be wonderful. And I think Tim's going to put that. There it is. It's in the chat. So please take a moment before your next activity. And thank you all again. Maybe I'll see some of you in an hour. Uh, and have a great afternoon, Tamisha. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Melody, I'll be contacting you so we can catch up. Oh, I really want to. Yay. Yes. I look forward to it.